thank you first I must thank President Hegarty. All the distinguished guests, the academic staff gradu graduates, no longer graduates, ladies and gentlemen, it was a great privilege and also some sense of surprise to listen to all those things talked about me earlier on. But I do think back and think that as I was growing up, it was quite normal to pay women less for doing the same work as a man, and I didn't think about it very much. It was only when I became a widow, I had five young children, I was a newly qualified teacher, I needed a job, and it all hit home. In a nearby school, a man who was separated from his wife was paid more than I was. He received a married man's allowance, but there was no married ma allowance for a woman. All over Ireland, there were male and female rate for a job of any kind, of the lowest and the highest. And as you've heard about it. But it's something that seems quite distant nowadays. The stronger sex was so-called, that was men, that's what they was referred to. And they received a bulkier wage packet than any woman did. And that was just us us using unusual every time in the 1960s. Towards the end of that 1960s, we were told that life would be wonderful when we joined the European Economic Community in 1973. Well, you've heard that when Ireland joined, all member states were obliged to bring in equal pay legislation. Well, that nearly didn't happen here. Minister for Forest, Foreign Affairs, Gareth Fitzgerald, asked on behalf of the then government for a delegation for permission just not to have employment equality to Irish women. Well, we, who a fairly small group of people in the women's movement, were appalled. We had founded this Council for Statuses of Women, which still exists, and the vast majority of Irish people did seem to agree with this and advised the EEC to ignore the Irish government. Well, one of our representatives on the Council of the Stars of Women was the late Hilda Tweedy. And we helped her to go to Brussels to explain to the true views of the Irish people. The government did not get its delegation and the Irish people did at last get the right to equality in employment. Didn't happen straight away even then. It took some work to work on it. But the lesson put me in thinking that I should not have a single faith in good sense of the Irish people, but a lot of people were right. You've heard that it wasn't all plain sailing. At that time, I was appointed the head of the new Employment Equality Agency. It was for operating the new rules. I remember receiving a letter at one stage. From, I couldn't help but laugh even when I got it. It was just from somebody explaining that it would be psychologically damaging for one particular group of men to receive a wage packet the same size as a woman's. Good Lord. I, repeat, I replied that I wasn't aware of the fact that men had a weaker intellect, though of course I did have some, in this case, a lot of suspicions. Anyway, the legislation was used in that group and people had to put up with it. We were older folk then and we put a lot of things right in this country. We were passing on the baton now to you, the younger generation, the gra graduates and your mothers, and fathers, and any, grandchildren, and any grandchildren that are here. There is still a lot wrong, and it will your, be your job to help put it right. And if you don't help to put it right, if you don't keep going forward, you unfortunately will be slipping back. For instance, I hope very strongly, and I hope you do too, that what happened to Savita Hala Panover never happens to another woman in this country. I hope that a woman who may come here and 
future as a refugee is never again forced to give birth against her will in this country. I hope that you will ensure that your chosen fields in journalism, photography, are the law. You will remember that fairness does not just come, uh, be a, a principle, but it is an ab abiding reality. And without it, we will be going backwards. But I think that you are people, young, middle and older, like myself, that nowadays we do want to keep going forward. We certainly don't want to slip back. I want to thank you very much indeed, President, and all your team, and all of the graduates, and their parents, relations and friends, and especially any grandparents who may be here. Thank you very much for listening to me. I haven't much anything new to say to any of you that people have known about, but I want you to think about it. And I really want to make everybody here realize that the next generation is important. And for me, I am just really a figurehead of the past, but I will treasure this award very much forever. Thank you.